Hello, my name is David Finney. I'm a Big Fix technical advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. Today I wanted to uh, do a video on migrating Big Fix clients uh, from one server over to another. And that'll make it uh, pretty helpful if you guys are in a position where uh, perhaps you're using an old server version and need to upgrade to a newer version and essentially being able to migrate those clients from that old server over to the new server. If you have any questions uh, after watching the video, don't hesitate to uh, reach out uh, over email. You'll see my QR code here right now, and again, you'll see it at the end. Okay, to kick things off, uh, this whole video basically rides on this one fixlet, which is the Switch Bez Client Action Site Masthead. So you see that's for uh, version uh, 9.0 or greater. Uh, a couple of notes about this, and again, you're going to see this in the uh, the video where, I about to, where I'm about to actually demonstrate this, but... Um, again, this allows you to move a client from one big fix instance over to another. Uh, again, if you're moving from an old server to a newer server, pretty helpful. The fixlet cannot be run on a system where a relay service is present. So to make that to where you can migrate uh, something that was serving as a relay, make sure to uninstall the relay service first. The uh, only other thing I wanted to kind of call out about it is that with the older versions, um, so let's just say that you have a 2008 R2 system that's got you know version 9.2 on it. Uh, it is totally acceptable that if you stood up another root server, uh, basically, essentially with the license key management center, you can actually shave off a few license spots. That'll give you a new license authorization file so that you can stand up another root server basically right next to the old one. And uh, essentially, you could actually, you know, keep your old, you know, root server, that 2008R2, let's say 9.2 version, and uh, stand up a new root server, say on server 2019 with uh, version 10.0.2. And you could absolutely migrate those old version systems over to the new uh, system, uh, you know, running on version 10 uh, without any issue. It's not going to come up with any problems. Uh, so again, could be pretty helpful for those trying to migrate, upgrade their server infrastructure. But uh, let's go ahead and let's jump into us actually performing that exercise. Okay, so starting from the top here, um, I've got three systems that are essentially going to be in this uh, example. So we have our existing big fix root server. This is the system we're going to pick on for moving it around. And this is the other uh, root server. So there's two root servers here. And again, probably one of the biggest applications for this type of thing um, that I'm about to, to demonstrate here is to, you know, if I wanted to move a, a system from maybe production over to a dev uh, big fix instance, or probably one of the biggest reasons out there that I've run into is for people trying to migrate from an uh, old deployment of big fix over to a new one. Uh, so that could be, you know, hey, I'm on 2003 or 2008, and I need to move up to maybe a 2016 or a 2019 server base uh, that will, you know, work, essentially. So you can actually use the License Key Management Center, which we do have some videos about on how to uh, basically shave off some of the license seats so that you can use it to stand up another big fix root server. Uh, and then from there, you know, once you have that stood up, uh, then you can, you know, perform this task or, you know, however you seem, you know, want to, want to basically execute this, so... Lots of ways that this could be applicable in a new environment, but most often it's tied to upgrades. Um, I will say that if you have like a version 9.5, 9.2 or something like that running, um, you can say have like an old deployment, say if we're going to go like a 2008 R2 uh, and need to migrate over to a fresh 2019 with, uh, you know, version uh, 10, 10.2 big fix. It's okay to do, you know, migration of clients from an old infrastructure over to a newer infrastructure, um, just as long as the client versions are, you know, of a lower level than the new root server. Uh, and again, this is just the migrating of the client step. You can still do an export of, you know, like computer groups, custom content, you know, to get everything else moved over. But this this video is just going to focus on the client side. So again, this is uh, one root server. You can see this root server right here. Uh, that's the system that it's connected to. That's the FQDN. And then we have this system here, which is uh, actually just connecting up to IP address. Um, again, that could be a host name, but it's uh, technically just rel root is the system name. Um, you can see the uh, FQD on that. And then there's one other system in the uh, scenario, which is the endpoint that we're going to pick on. 
Uh, so you can see the system here. I was doing a quick test just to make sure that it could in fact reach the uh, place where I'm moving it to. Uh, so I just did a ping test. I just did a DNS entry for that system uh, just to make sure that it could get its way around. So essentially that's the, the first start of it. Now the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the where I've got that system now. I'm going to search the word masthead. You'll see this fixlet. Um, so you see it's basically for anything that's greater than version 9. So watch out for that. Uh, but essentially that'll get you what you need to kind of get the ball rolling. So from there, uh, so the first thing I want to kind of call out, you can see I made a, uh, you know, move the client over to the rail root server. We're going to be using that to actually do this. Uh, but I'll show you what I did to kind of get there. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit copy on it. So you can see that it's calling out localhost. Obviously that doesn't make any sense uh, for what we're doing. So that's the part that you're meant to edit. And so what you're going to do is uh, if you go to the actions area, there's actually two pieces of this that you want to change. So one, localhost, because, you know, if we're telling it to grab it from itself, that's, you know, not going to work because that's just going to, you know, grab itself again and re-register a client. It's not going to do what we want to do. Um, that and uh, this part of the URL is wrong. That, that should actually be masthead, not uploads. And that'll get you the appropriate URL that you need to actually run this. So there's two things you need to change. That and that. So you'll see over on my, uh, I'll just minimize this for now. This is my edited version. And you'll see there's the, you know, I changed out localhost for well root, and I changed out the uploads that they had there in the URL over the word masthead. And that as it is should work just fine. So let's, uh, let's test it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take action on this, and we're gonna go ahead and set it against that endpoint one. Click OK. And endpoint one is the system here. So in the background right now, uh, what it's doing is it should actually go and cache the uh, new masthead that it's going to grab from the uh, root server, the uh, the rel root server. And again, this would work for anything. It doesn't need to be rel. It's not any. It's not dependent on what operating system is there. It's just more concerned about is there a big fix root server there. Uh, so anyway. It's uh, grabbing that uh, masthead file right now. It looks like it's already done that. And now we're just waiting for the uh, endpoint. Okay, so it's like this is going to be the last thing you're going to see from that, that endpoint. And you can see this is the, uh, the new root server. Now, the reason why you're only going to see this, uh, this status here is because the, you know, once it switches that masthead, it has nowhere to you know, report back to this root server that it got it. So this will be the last thing you see. So we should be seeing that system show up into this root server here pretty quick. And just kind of waiting that out. It, it, it does take just a short amount of time uh, to basically dump out the old registration data from the old root server and basically reset itself for a uh, new root environment. And then it should show up reporting here pretty quickly. Oh, there it is. So there you go. Successful uh, migration from one system to another. And you can see how that could be done pretty quickly and at scale. Uh, now, the one thing I do also want to mention, um, if you are dealing with relays, the uh, actual language in this, the relevance language, let me just go ahead and show that real quick here. I'm just going to jump down to the relevance here. I want to call out um, specifically right here. It will not run on a root server. It will not run on a relay. So essentially what you need to make sure to do is uh, if you want to run it on a relay, you need to actually uninstall your relay service before migrating the relay over. So, uh, and then obviously if it's as a gather service, I mean, technically that would be a relay or a root server, but the same point stands. Uh, those services can't be there to run a migration because essentially these components will break, uh, you know, in, in the process of moving it. So, Anyway, back to it. Uh, so we've successfully migrated that system over, and just to show just how you know easy it is, I've got the essential reverse job. So you'll see I've got the endpoint one that's still it, you know it's gone dark to this system yet. It just hasn't you know gone dark to my console. Usually it marks it offline after about forty five minutes. Uh, but in any case, I'm going to go ahead and just move it back just to show you know kind of the reverse step, just so you can see it kind of goes both ways. So I've already made a uh, copy edit uh, for this one so you can see all I'm doing in this one is exactly the reverse step so instead of you know to the root server I'm sending it back to the uh, or I'm sorry from the rail root server over to the uh, the Windows root server 
So you can see it's exactly the same URL, uh, except for obviously a change in the FQDN of you know where we're telling it to go. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take action on that. I'm going to go ahead and send it against endpoint one again. Click OK. Let that run. And then uh, we should get a duplicate registration of endpoint one over here since it's technically going to be a new registration. So I'm just going to wait for that to happen. And yeah, that should be kind of the conclusion of uh, this video once this finishes up. Just want to kind of show it end to end. So I'll just wait this out. So it looks like it's already grabbed the... Uh, the masthead file from the Windows root server. And we just gotta wait for that endpoint one to check in, get that job, and process it. And then I should get a new entry over and back over to the uh, the Windows root server. Just waiting that out real quick. So a um, little side note while we're uh, waiting for that, there is there is a way for you to kind of test to make sure that you know the URL is gonna work okay too. Um, probably the most popular way to kind of do that is you can actually bring up, so I'm just gonna go back to the, uh, the task here. I'll just grab this, throw this in my clipboard. I just wanna show how this works because this should be you know, renderable. So anyway, I'm, while we're waiting for that to go, I'll just bring that up and show that real fast. So, I'm starting a web browser here. Apparently, this is the first time I've uh, launched Edge on this system. Okay, and it's probably going to tell me about everything. There you go. So, if you can render this page, you know you got your URL right. So you can see that's how I leveraged it there. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that just because sometimes that could be pretty handy. Okay, so this one shows that it's not reported yet, although I think it may have already actually done it. It did do it. Um, you can see the new registration right here. So that, one, that time we didn't get a uh, pending downloads report. I uh, just processed it so quickly it just came back not reported, but um, you can see that here's our old line. You can see that on the last report time, 10.03, and you got one that came in at 10.07. As you see, it's 10.08 uh, over in uh, Mountain Time Zone when I'm running this uh, video. So you see that just took place. Um, you know, obviously get rid of your duplicate entry because, you know, there's no point. Um, okay, so migrated back and forth. So everything is uh, good to go, and that's essentially how that works. Okay, last slide here, just wanted to share a few helpful links. Again, if you have any questions, my QR code is right there. So if something comes up, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you'd like to be notified when there's updates, please subscribe to the Big Fix TA YouTube channel. The link is below.